systems is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is the Week in Geek with David D. Squared, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. Broadcasting from the Gregory Ricks and Associates Wealth Management Studios, here's D. Squared. Greetings, people of Earth! This is the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D Squared, along with... DJ. Hold on, DJ, I unplugged my headphones. Good one, real smooth, real smooth. <laughs> All right. Wait, no, wait. Oh, there we you back? I'm back. Welcome I'm back. back. All right. Woo-hoo. All right, let me lay out the show for you tonight. We got one, count them, one guest... The one and only Jamie Kennedy. Now, uh, if you don't know who Jamie Kennedy is, shame on you. The Jamie Kennedy Kennedy experiment that he used to have on the CW. He did a show with Fran Drescher, Living with Fran. But you probably know him from Scream. He was the dork who was like, no, you never go alone in a horror movie. That's how you die. The virgin always survives. The virgin always survives. So, Jamie Kennedy, and it's great, too. Like, I got a chance to talk with him and and you know like I, I've, I've told this story countless times at conventions etc where like sometimes you meet people that you really want to interview and they're just they suck <laughs> well Jamie didn't suck he was good but he was the one sentence kind of answer person like mm-hmm. I'm just like so tell me about this it was great I'm like dude come on so Fortunately, I had a buttload of questions written down, so we kind of did rapid fire. But we, we, I, I got to go into dig into the vault, which really made me happy because then I just got to play this with him. Hit it. Mm. Yeah. So classic. He has this crappy movie called Kicking It Old School back in the day. It cost them twenty four million dollars to make. They Came only out in 07. yes, and they only made uh, four million dollars off of that twenty four million dollars. Ooh. So needless to say, uh, he was kind of done with the big movies, but he's got a brand new movie coming out, and it, and, and it should not be as good as it is. It's called Don't Suck. <laughs> now, uh, you remember the first time you walked in that studio? We're getting ready to start the show, and I'm like, all right, DJ, don't suck. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> don't suck. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a big thing. Like, comedians, they don't usually say break a leg. They're like, don't suck. And what's funny about this movie is it, the guy's shtick that you think is a shtick is that he's a vampire. And he's all he's deadpan and he delivers the jokes. But, but the guy is a comedian, Matt Reif, and he's got his own uh, Netflix special. But it turns out he is a vampire and then hilarity ensues as they make their way to Vegas, etc. Mm. The movie has no business being funny and it's funnier than hell. And it, it's like it was compelling, too. I'm kind of like, huh. like. What? And then here's the best part. Three ninety nine right now, streaming and on demand. Three ninety nine on like all the major platforms. Oh. Apple, Amazon, all that stuff. So three ninety nine is what we're gonna talk with Jamie Kennedy tonight. But first, let's do this. And now your top nerd news stories from around the world, brought to you by the Viridian Tea Company. Find them on Etsy. And now, your top nerd news stories. So, this story, it just makes me so happy. Apparently, Lucasfilm is reportedly developing a What If inspired Star Wars television series. And there series. hasn't been any like information on it at all. No episodes. Like I remember whenever the uh, Marvel What If, we got, we got announced like a Zombies episode, yes, whatever. We got announced right. all the things. But well, we got nothing. No, and and so a lot of this is in development now. Kevin Feige was asked about some of the stuff uh, because the people who were reporting on it initially pitched him a Star Wars Marvel crossover, mm. and he was like, "No, no, 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 we're not crossing the streams." Now, I mean, obviously, you want to keep your revenue streams uncrossed, but yeah. I mean, you would think that that might make sense. But I think. Right now, they're working on their own in-house yeah. problems. That, yeah, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. So, <laughs> they're working on that, so they don't want to connect the streams. I get it. Don't cross the streams. But this What If series, the, the picture uh, from Screen Rant is like some bad Photoshop of, of Anakin, you know, without a messed up face in his Darth Vader you know, uniform, mm-hmm. and then Obi-Wan in like a white Grand Moss. Who's the guy, who's the guy who created? 
created the Death Star. You know that the that, guy from Rogue One? Yeah, he's yeah, like, I don't choke on your ambitions. I forgot Robin. his name. Yeah, I, I watched know, right? Rogue One so long ago. I know he, he wasn't important. It doesn't matter. Uh, but but then you got freaking uh, Ahsoka over there in like Inquisitor robes almost. <laughs> it's like, damn. But so the thing is, like, like what would they do? And you and I were spitballing See, literally like ten minutes ago. The, the most obvious thing that they would do is, what if Anakin won the duel on Mustafar? That's the most obvious one. I feel like if, they if, have to. They if, have to. If Obi Wan didn't have the high ground, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. If Anakin had the high ground and didn't get his legs chopped off, you underestimate my mate, my power, oh, old I hate man. You. <laughs> you, you got barbecue stains on your robes by yourself, <laughs> Obi Wan. Oh, and another man. one would be like, what if Qui Gon survived getting stabbed in the chest like every other? Star Star Wars character ever. Bad ever. guys, good guys. You get stabbed in the heart, you're going to survive unless you're Except Qui-Gon. Except if you're Qui-Gon. Unless, unless if... you're Qui-Gon. Or I don't know who the streamer is, this guy who does like like deep fake of, of Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan and Anakin, uh-huh. like watching the, the Star Wars series. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, I saw of George Lucas, the oh, deep fake. Oh my God, it is so funny because th- th- you've got him playing Qui-Gon going, oh, well, surely she's dead. She just got stabbed in the chest. And it's like, what do you mean she's alive? <laughs> so, <laughs> but, I mean, but, but, so what would happen if Qui-Gon didn't die, though? So, like, I mean, like, go if, on to uh, train Anakin and hopefully not bring him to the dark side. Maybe I guess you know. Yeah, he would have him around, and he was supposed to be a, a bad influence or whatever. Yes, but I think most of the episodes would come from the prequels because I think that's where all like the main story comes from. Well, and it's funny because you and I were even pointed out that all the plot lines we were throwing up, throwing out there, was like like Padme if she didn't die of sadness, <laughs> or if uh, Anakin <laughs> actually listened to um, what's his name, Mace Windu, instead of the, the <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so too weak. weak, I'm too weak. Oh. See if if Anakin was a little smarter, maybe he had some IQ, more IQ. Yeah, I you know look when I first saw that in the theaters, dude, I was just like, this is just lame. I'm like like the the whole turn to the dark side was so rushed. I'm just like you know I'm just like it was like oh she could die. I'm having bad dreams, and all of a sudden he's killing kids. Okay, I'm like what the hell just happened? See, but it, now we now we have the Clone Wars series and it makes so much more sense. Now you're you're absolutely correct, but I didn't have that yeah. when I walked out the theater. So when I walked to the theater i'm like like that was rough pfft, yeah poop. Uh, i can't say what i want to say now it's my favorite star wars movie so ha yeah shut up but <laughs> it but 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 that, that's the thing though so like then you know palpatine does not because the empire doesn't take over yeah and then the clone army is still around so you'll probably end up crushing what's left of the uh right. the, the res- I get on the Confederacy that they uh, the, that's what do they call it? the CS the Confederate I don't know I don't know I forgot what they call it the, but uh, the, or, the, the droid states of America <laughs> I just thought of another one what if uh, uh, in the Phantom Menace whenever um, we first see Darth Maul interact with Qui Gon he charges at Anakin what if what if um, Darth Maul actually just straight up killed Anakin there. Oh, Remember that what? scene wherever he was? They were in the desert on Tatooine. Right. And Anakin was running away, and um, Darth Maul was chasing him. Oh, and he goes, think, "Duck, duck." Yeah. yeah what, if he does, what if he didn't duck? He's like, "What do you mean?" And just off. Oh, what slice. if Darth Maul kills poor little Anakin? What if Anakin didn't hear him say "duck"? <laughs> he had sand in his ears. <laughs> That's why I hate sand. It got me killed, man. Uh. Well, what, what, what? All right. Following that, though. All right. What if Saboba actually killed Anakin? All in- these are about just Anakin dying. <laughs> I think. <laughs> This is pod racing. <laughs> oh, I'm burning a lot. See, oh my god. Then what would Palpatine do? Would Ray still would well, be Darth, alive? Darth Maul is still a badass. I yeah. mean, you know, you talk about, dude. All right, sidebar. When when uh, Phantom Menace first came out and and it hadn't hit theaters yet, mm-hmm. Darth Maul was all over the place. Yeah, like yeah. They, I bumped into a dude who had a full calf tattoo of Darth Maul. And what was funny, I was hanging out at the bar of the dungeon down at the French Quarter at the time. Mm-hmm. I saw him a month after the movie came out again. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, bruh, how's that tattoo feeling right now? He's, like, he's still cool. I'm like, but he's dead. <laughs> he but that's what you thought. That's moment. what you thought. That's what you thought. <laughs> well, that's true, but we had to wait 20 years for it. So this poor yeah, dude's right. walking around with a freaking Darth Maul tattoo. I mean, whenever <laughs> Darth Maul did come back in the Clone Wars, he probably felt great about it then. I'm sure he did. He's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm vindicated. I've been vindicated. <laughs> but all right, so wait, Ray. Yeah, Ray would still be a thing because it's Palpatine. It's because not... Palpatine, somebody slept with his ugly hermit looking ass, and, yeah. and somehow he had he had a babe. Gold diggers. <laughs> hey, Emperor Palpy. What's up, Palpatine? <laughs> I don't spit in the studio. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, what's up, Palpy? So, Ray would still be a thing, so she'd probably just be straight up evil. Right, okay, but all right, so if Anakin dies, then there's no Luke, there's no Leia. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess you would have Han Solo. Oh my God, Han Solo. We totally forgot about Han yeah, Solo. Hans, okay, that, and then at that point, Han Solo would still be just a random fault. He'd probably be dead. Yeah. Frozen carbonite for eternity. Well, no. He it, might, Boba it, Fett was still hunting for him. Remember? In well, the- I, that's assuming that everything plays out because, I mean, so we would have to go back to the Han Solo movie. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because, like, you know, he joined the Empire, whatever was a, was a he grunt. Quit, yeah. he, he met Chewbacca. What if, oh, what if Han Solo never met Chewbacca? Ooh. That's an interesting one. That I, is an interesting one. I wonder, I don't even know what would happen. Huh. I mean. Because uh, uh, Chewbacca was in um, the prequels and he was he was part of the, um, what is it? Uh, not Rebel Alliance. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, but whatever. He, he was part. Well, he was. He, he was, was on part Kashyyyk, of the, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but so well, I'm, I'm wondering, but because Chewie was the, was the one who always fixed the Millennium yeah. Falcon. So like Han would have just gotten caught. Just, yeah. Because because if Chewie if you never had Chewie, he, nobody would be able to fix this stupid uh, Millennium Falcon. Yeah. You know what about Lando? What if Lando never bought Bespin? <laughs> <laughs> then you, you know I don't know. There's all kinds of weird stories, man. I don't know what they're going with, but I, 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 I'm, I'm interested to see what well, what was the other one? The Trade Federation. Scungy just texted me. Oh, yeah, yeah said, Scungy's yeah. not here tonight. He got a bobo. Unlucky. Dude, he's unlucky when it comes to Uber. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just drop it right there. Uh, but a uh. uh, good time was had at Chewbacca's until the Uber arrived. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Wait, but before we move on to the next topic, we got to talk about the final episode of What If. That's and It's going to be titled Brotherly oh, Love. God. Brotherly yeah. Love. Because that, that makes sense if... Um, if, if what if if, R, if R2D2 if R, yeah so it ne- starts with R2D2 and he never gets um gets, picked up by Luke and so that means Luke would eventually probably become just a normal pilot or not a normal pilot a he hero would, pilot he would realize like, he had a force he'd be like Wedge Antilles he'd yeah be, he'd exactly. be a, 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 a super awesome stick jock but would never have you know embraced his his Jedi roots or whatever yeah he would not uh, he wouldn't even know of the Jedi he wouldn't have R2D2 yeah because he R2D2 would still be on the counselor ship because they'd have the plan so they wouldn't know have know the, about the exhaust port. They wouldn't have the Death Star plans, and so, they, so y- Alderaan would still not get blown up. Yavin would probably get blown to pieces. And then the Darth Vader speech wouldn't happen. The "I am your father" that wouldn't happen. Oh well, yeah, no. So which is so, which leads Luke to most likely marry Leia. Brotherly love, and that's Ugh. that, and then end scene, end and, scene, and, and season, and, wh- and whoever the watcher is, just like, oh, I did not want to <laughs> show you all that. My watcher. bad. <laughs> oh my, Qui Gon should be the watcher. Every time somebody gets Qui-Gon's killed, force goes. he's all like, yeah, you had that coming. See, it hurts to get stabbed with a lightsaber, <laughs> doesn't it, punk? Ugh. Oh God, this will be the greatest what if series. They, we need to go to Hollywood right now exactly. and make sure they hear what we're talking <laughs> Our about. What if scripts? Oh my God! All right, Harry. I don't. You know what? I don't have a Harry Potter song in here. Oh, well. you don't have the Harry Potter theme. I don't. Oh well. Slacking. So moving on to our next topic, which is the Harry Potter. They are in a TV series uh, talks. It's only in the nascent development for, period. It's going to be on HBO. Uh, yes, for Max. For Max. For gotcha. Max. HBO Max, whatever the hell they want to call it these days. Uh, so they're taking uh, like script ideas from, from different writers, from different writers that from American and British writers. And and you mm-hmm. and I were kind of wondering because the article it's very vague. Yeah, it, it basically. It, I, they don't want to talk about it. So Warner Brothers and Max have basically said like, oh, no, no, no nothing to see here, nothing to see they, here. So I, I was confused about it. So they, they named it a like Harry Potter series, but usually they refer to it as the Wizarding World. It's not a right. Harry Potter story. So I was confused. Is, is it going to be like a reboot or is it going to be an ongoing story from for his son or something like that? Two things. Uh, eventually, they're probably going to reboot Harry they're, Potter. They're going to. That, that's going to happen. But... What I do not want is a bunch of Harry Potter side missions. Oh, I, no. I don't want that. I want I want to know about some of the other people. Now, exactly. granted, I haven't read all the books, so there might be people that probably got some limelight that I'm not aware of in some of the books I didn't read. Mm-hmm. But, you know, th- there's so much stuff in that world, kind of like with Star Wars, where you had the expanded universe. Yeah. This is their opportunity to kind of have the expanded universe without what J.K. Rowling has and- written, like like with, with the American wizards and all that stuff. With the, with the uh, how to tame your dragon or yeah. whatever the hell it is. And that's what they kind of <laughs> did with um, Hogwarts Legacy, the game, where it was set bef- bef- way before Harry Potter and any of that Before stuff Tom happened. Riddle tried yeah, to before... take over school and then exactly. failed. As and that Voldemort. game was awesome, dude. You I mean, didn't Palpatine get, took over to a galaxy. It. Voldemort couldn't even take over a high school Could for take the love of God. Britain. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Could take over the high school in Britain. <laughs> I mean, come on. But, uh, so I, I'm curious as to what this will be because it's like, 
I don't want more Harry Potter. I want more yeah. Harry Potter, the Wizarding World. Wizarding World, yeah. yeah that's why I was know? confused about. They didn't even say the words Wizarding World. It would be is... cool to see a series of like about the Muggles, though. Yeah. You know? or, or or like the twin brothers, like oh, the Weasley like, twins. Yeah, but yeah. I guess, but they, one of them died in the movie, so it'd have to take place in between movies, maybe like the series. But I don't. know. Or maybe their first years at Hogwarts, because well, we didn't see their first years at Hogwarts. W- what one thing that did Warner Brothers uh, and Max say? They said that they're looking at maybe ten years worth of Harry so like Potter a, like stuff, like a Breaking Bad type of. Well, so it might be maybe. Schedule. Uh, they might kind of have one-off seasons, like 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 what what Marvel's been doing with with uh, like with Echo or yeah. or you know Loki got two seasons, but some of the other oh so like, like just one continuous show, it'd be multiple it, different shows. That yeah, take maybe, maybe there's years. a bunch of shows that were just one season. I they see. might not they might not try to do that interconnected thing that Marvel's done, but maybe just like some different he, stories. Yeah, yeah, here's a, here's a different storyline because that would be interesting and just kind of flesh yeah, out I'd, the I'd world. Like to see that, yeah. And that then you might bring in new fans of like oh well that's cool. I, I want to see what that yeah, is. Yeah, like you know? that character specifically yeah, yeah yeah so all right well before we go to break uh what what, what did we <laughs> oh, <God. clears throat> so uh, uh pinocchio P- well pinocchio unstrung now that is going to be in this new uh winnie the pooh verse the pooh verse <laughs> as it were where winnie the pooh blood and honey where he's a uh, you know a, a killer in the thousand acre wood and they also have a couple of spinoffs like bambi uh attacks like bambi bambi's revenge <laughs> but i'm not joking like this, this is serious they're making these b sort of movies for the pooh verse where it's just like you like slasher films here's a bunch of stupid ass slasher films on a low budget and hey you know what Dude, look the pinocchio idea is kind of cool though because it's almost reminds me of something like frankenstein right but like puppet master have you seen puppet master i have not seen puppet, puppet master, master one nope. or two nope. or three nope and then there's five puppet master five nope Yep. Never seen it. You just see them. They're, they're, they're really cheap. You can find them in the dollar bin at, at, at any any Walmart across America. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> in the dollar bin, the Puppet Master ch- Quintology. <laughs> so, but what's funny is we were we were digging in to see if we could find more information, but we stumbled across a, a, a school classroom. Yeah, yeah, we stumbled across an article about how some teacher, oh, we'll love, I want to put on Winnie the Pooh for the kids. Yes. Um, oh, who so doesn't love Christopher They put Robin? on the Blood and Honey movie for 20 minutes without realizing. <laughs> But the thing is, the first few scenes are very obvious. It is not your standard Winnie the Pooh movie. This, this is not a children's movie. It's scary and there's blood. Yeah. Why are we watching this, teacher? So the teacher, I don't know, they might have like left the classroom or something, but I don't know. I don't know he messed up that bad. You know, look, sometimes movie day in class was also for the teacher to be like, hey, <laughs> I'm going to just put my head down, but I'm listening. I'm watching you all with my head down. <laughs> if, if you hear snoring, it's from the movie, not me. All right, when we come back, we've got news about Walmart, and uh, they're just slashing prices everywhere. And Indiana Jones. Getting a game. He's getting a game, and it's probably going to be better than the last couple of movies that they put out. So, all that and more, Jamie Kennedy as well. This is The Weekend Geek with D Squared on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Serving the Louisiana hobby and games community for over 12 years, Go For Games has prided itself on offering the very best in personalized customer service, unique experience-based events, and premium amenities for our Go For Academy members, such as After Hours Private Gaming Space, Full Immersion RPG Room, Rotating Board Game Library, and coming soon a video game arcade. So join the Go For community at 4953 West Napoleon Avenue. For more info, go to goforgamesnola.com or the Go For Discord. Go For Games, where you got games. Now, from the Gregory Ricks and Associates Wealth Management Studios, this is News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Welcome back to the Weekend Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. Like them on Facebook at The Weekend Geek Radio Show. Here's D Squared. Welcome back in to the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. And the voice guy just said that. He stepped all over my line, son. 
Oh, unfortunate. Well, you know what? As always, we want to strongly urge you to check out the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Week in Geek. Follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio and the Instagrams, The Week in Geek. And finally, I could say download the podcast on the free iHeartRadio. Hey, finally. I know, shut up. I, I finally did something. I finally loaded the finally podcast. Finally did your job. And and I went back and I and I loaded up a, a, a oh, crap. Oh, God. Uh, Who? Spit it out, man. You got it. I Frank believe. Grillo. Frank ah. Grillo. So him and his son, Remy Grillo. Uh, remember, we, you and I were talking about it at, at last year's uh, uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Remy Grillo is his son. He had a movie uh, called mm. uh, 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 The Resurrection yeah. of... Man, I suck at my job. I need to take <laughs> brain supplements. Uh, the, the guy who killed people. It doesn't matter. Uh, but Remy worked at, at, at the, uh, the people who did... Uh, Oh God! Come on, you know what I'm talking about. I don't. I'm forgetting. Bloomhouse. Bloom, Bloom, yeah, there we go. Jesus Bloom Christ! I suck at this. Bill McPurge and the new FNAF movie. Yeah. So, so he got to read scripts all summer long. He interned at Bloomhouse. Oh, so Frank Grillo, Frank Grillo, the guy who played Crossbones in the MCU. Yes. And yeah. so he also wants to punch uh, Robert De Niro in the face, <laughs> and I reminded him of it, and it was great. Hilarity ensued, and his son wants to go take on Ron Perlman now. So, yeah, I know. Exciting like, things in the works. They're, they're, they're crazy people. I, I dig them. So I put that podcast up, and then. And pretty soon I'm going to have Michael Ironside coming up. And oh, nice. tonight we have Jamie Kennedy, and so I'll be putting that up as well. And, you know, you can also click that little red microphone button on the iHeart app. Well, hello there. And you, too, can be a part of the show. Click that little red microphone button, leave us a 30-second message, and you can be on the show. I haven't heard that in a while. I know, right? Well, because I've been, like, you know, slacking in my duties. You know, it's <laughs> br- new year, new me, son. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. New year, new me. And you know what? Good Lord. In two and a half weeks, you're going to be eligible for the draft. Yay! So Way to go, exciting. Son. You'll be 18, legal to go to a party <laughs> or something. Or something. Or you can go to Walmart and buy adult games like Starfield. But Starfield's not going to be sold at Walmart anymore. They are getting rid of all their physical games of Starfield. And many other chains will probably f- start Look. to follow suit because digital digital media has now just taken over everything. I mean, like like physical copies of the game of Starfield. Right now, it's just Starfield at Walmart. They're pennying it out, as it were. Scungie used to say that for GameStop when they had stuff they couldn't get rid of stock. They would penny it out and then throw it away, destroy it, because Walmart is going to, air quote, destroy these games, whether they literally destroy them or just toss them in the dumpster remains to be seen but the reason they're getting rid of it is because you can get starfield like for free on cloud gaming or what most people do they just download digital versions for their xbox pc etc etc and you brought up the fact that it's it kind of turned to dvds but it's not even that because with dvds at least like you don't have you don't have buffering you don't have you know your it doesn't get digitalized if you have bad internet it's all this it's all there but with games it doesn't matter either way if you download it, it's not going to buffer anything. There's no benefit well, to the and, disc. And, and, and the thing with the DVD thing is that, you know, like Brian Held, our, our former co-host, dearly departed friend, he used to call me a Luddite and a, a you know, anachronistic person who collected DVDs. And what it was is I was too cheap to pay for cable and streaming services and all yeah. that stuff. And it's just like, I'm like, I'm going to just get the DVD for five bucks, whatever. But it eventually got to a point where I'm like, I got too many stupid ass DVDs. And I just started getting rid of them and throwing yeah. them away. And then, and now that I have streaming services, it's just like, why did I ever collect DVDs? So, I mean, those are starting to go go away. Your, yeah. your DVD sections are shrinking. But Gaming again, I- sections in, in the in the Walmarts are starting to shrink. They're just one, one, two aisles max. But again, I said with the DVDs and the Blu-ray, like for um, some sort of DVDs, they have the IMAX version, which is a DVD exclusive. So they still have benefits to getting a DVD. Correct. But with the games, you don't got anything. It's the what? same thing either way. No, but with a, with a video game, and this is something that uh, you know, you and I were talking about, Uncle Mo, uh, and apparently Mo texted me that that uh, Puppet Master is now up to episodes nine and ten. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of Puppet Master movies out there. But you have you buy a game on a physical copy of a game, but once you load it, you have to get connected to the internet to download the other half of yeah. the game well, or patches and all these other stupid things, updates, everything. So. It, Even having a physical copy of the game, you can't always play the damn game, which is exactly. 
BS. Well, because what they do is they don't they start creating the discs before they fully finish the game. So all the discs are fully made before they have already like patched out everything. So whenever you literally day one, there is probably going to be like a thirty gigabyte update to your game. Well, it is what yeah. it is, and 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 that's what really sucks is that you know it's just like they're they're charging us for full price for a game that they haven't even freaking completed half the time, and then yeah. it's like that. But then when you want, uh, you know, like the DLC, well, that's what it's in the name, downloadable content. Yeah, you know, it's like so. If you're not connected to the internet, if you're if you don't have Game Pass or or whatever they have for like switches and everything else, mm -hmm. you know. You're screwed. Yeah. You're just screwed because you can't go out and buy a physical copy of the DLC. I mean, they, they've, did, they've done that in the past, but now you've got retailers that are like, hey, you know what? We're it's not making not, money off yeah, this. Yeah, it's not worth the two aisles in our store. We can put more rows of toilet paper because every time there's a you know some sort of like weather event, people buy three billion rolls of toilet paper. Right. So we're going to add four aisles of more toilet paper and just kick Xbox to the curb. And you know what? That makes sense now that I think about it and say it out loud. It makes more money. I, I want more toilet paper in my life. <laughs> two ply, two ply. All right, so moving on. Speaking of video games, Scungy, he, he took one for the team, or I guess he took one for his own team uh he's he's playing injured but he's not playing so we're talking about indiana jones actually so he had said it to me and you said it to me as well they had the uh what is it, the xbox showcase or something the xbox showcase something and like that. yeah I don't know what the name like, is. hey here's some new stuff we're working on and they didn't he, really have much except for this game except for this game what is it called circle around the world or it's the like <laughs> great circle or something it's Hold a on. circle of life uh one second, let wait, me. See. Wait, oh, okay, I have it up here. I have I have a paper. Let me oh, see. oh, it's all, I wrote it the on the paper. The Great Circle, yeah. I wrote it on the, the paper. Great Circle. The Great Circle. Yeah. So basically, the plot I think is uh, Indiana Jones realized that wow, all these insane historical monuments, such as the Sphinx and other things, <laughs> all, Sphinx if, and other things. If if you line them up and draw a, a line through all of them, connect the dots, it makes a circle around the world. It makes a circle around the world. But here's the cool part: the 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 the, the trailer looks phenomenal yeah and then you and i were watching the gameplay trailer that it's they a first, released it's gonna be a first person game yeah it's it's first person and the it's cool part is you've got the bull whip and yeah. uh th this is the best part so the one of the guys who created who was the other guy with who uh, created a uh, fallout todd what? howard todd howard yeah, he was there todd howard's the uh, i think the main producer of the and game this poor guy his name is jerk but apparently it's 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 jerk in it's uh, yerk it's yerk in in island 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 rah, it was, rah, rah. Uh, but, sweden Sweet Sweden, yeah, Inga from Sweden. He can't say Indiana Jones here. In this game, you aren't just playing as Indy. You are Indiana Jones. You're Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. I want to be Indiana Jones too, please. Yeah, Inga from Sweden, Indiana Jones. But the game looks amazing. Like it. Uh, <laughs> no time for the, love, Doctor Jones. <laughs> the 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 physical gameplay reminds me of the, this game called The Forest. It's a survival horror game, and okay. it's a first-person survival horror game where. It's um, it's a lot of interactable things. You go in caves, explore mountains, the forest, everything. And the physical like gameplay itself, it's a first person game. The way you interact with things in the trailer versus the forest game, it's right. really similar. And I really enjoy that. Game. Well, and and you get to use the whip, the whip and, yeah. and they use they, they the emphasize whip. Emphasize that a lot. They, they emphasize the whip because you can use it to climb up buildings. You can use it to hit Nazis in the nuts distract with a whip. Distract enemies. Yeah, distract them. That that, that was stuff. that was interesting. Yeah, you crack the whip yeah, to the left. It reminds and you, me of the, uh, the Arkham games where you can just throw a battering and. Like, oh my gosh, that the bat! But, but the cool part was when when, when he hooks him with the, with by the legs and pulls him out. They they showed some stop motion where they were filming it with the guys with yeah, all those the mocap. Yeah. yeah, the mocap. That's the fancy it's word cool. for it. So uh, yeah, this looks but, really good, and it's coming out this year. It, it coming it, out this year. And like visually, it, dude, it looks like Indiana Jones. Like I expected it to look like maybe a little off, but oh my gosh, they get the face. No, right. I, I don't know who the voice is, but it sounds it like sound, him too. Yeah, it sounds I mean, like Harrison Ford. Doesn't sound as angry as real Harrison Ford, but yeah. you know, but but it was funny <laughs> though too. In the trailer, they have just that beam of light on oh, his yeah, the eyes. eyes, just the eyes. Whenever he has that epiphany moment, like oh my gosh, it makes a circle it, around the world. Even even the way that he goes about doing stuff, like whenever, for instance, he used the whip on an enemy, he straight up just used the whip on his nuts. 
<laughs> like no, that is something but, Indiana no, Jones would do. And, and then the final thing in the in the trailer when they were showing us the gameplay, you know, he's he's whacking everybody with a whip, and then finally he just pulls out his gun and bam! Oh, yeah, like, classic. Yeah, yeah, classic Indy, you wacky it prankster. Feels you. a lot more true to Indiana Jones <laughs> than the movies. Right, right, right. This game, so, are in- oh wait, I, that's the wrong. Oh, I hit Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. <laughs> he's so great. All right, so when we come back, we got Jamie Kennedy, his new movie. Don't suck. It is better than it has any reason to be. So uh, we'll talk to Jamie Kennedy next. And DJ and I, we started already brainstorming on the treatment because that's what they call it in Hollywood, son. A treatment. treatment. When... Like, I pitched a movie idea for him because his movie, uh, Kicking It Old School, was awful. And I brought that up. And then I even brought up Malibu's Most Wanted, which I, mm-hmm. I thought I might have pissed him off. He's like, yeah, you can't win them all. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a good sport. So Jamie Kennedy is coming up next right here on The Week in Geek with D-Squared on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Do you know a veteran in need? Nation's Finest, through the VA's Supportive Services for Veteran Families program, helps veterans and their families struggling with rent, employment, and other housing-related costs. Today, Nation's Finest operates more than 30 locations in California, Arizona, and Nevada, helping thousands of veterans every year. Visit nationsfinest.org or call 1-833-468-9676. That's 1-833-468-9676. Hello, this is Larry Barabino Jr., CEO of Nord Commission. Celebrate the holidays with Nord at our second annual Holidays in the Park celebration of lights, music, and community at Joe Brown Memorial Park. Join us now until January 2nd to experience the magic of this unique event, which includes a drive through experience and a walk-through adventure of holiday lights and festivities. Come out and enjoy this year's Holiday in the Park celebration at Joe Brown Memorial Park, open nightly until 9 p.m. This event is free for all ages. For more information, information, visit NordC.org. Now, from the Gregory Ricks and Associates Wealth Management Studios, this is News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Hey, you Ninja Turtle fans, this is Raphael. That's right, the OG Raphael. And the only show we listen to here in the sewer while eating our favorite pizza is the Weekend Geek on WRNO Radio. Bottom power! Welcome back in to The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D-Squared. Let's go to the guest line. You remember my boy from Scream, the Jamie Kennedy experience, and so much more. Jamie Kennedy joins us. Jamie, how you doing today, brother? Good. What's up, D? How are you? Dude, I am living the dream right now. Uh, but look, let's talk about your new flick, Don't Suck. Uh, look, man, I watched it last night. I'm freaking loving it, dude. This is a solid gem, bro. Thank you, buddy. It really is, right? It's this little sneaky movie that shouldn't be as funny as it is. Well, you know, and I saw the trailer, like, like I don't even know, maybe two months ago, and I was even joking about it on the air with my co-host, and, uh, I, like, just the trailer looked funny as hell, and if anybody doesn't know, here, listen to this. Oh, my God. I don't even know where to begin. Do you believe me now? How could I not? I mean, the coffin is eccentric, but explainable, okay? The, the, the glowing eyes, context. The teeth, fake. The shooting blood, it's an odd lifestyle choice, but hey, it's Vegas. But dude, you turned into a bat, man. Turned into a friggin' bat. Matt Wright is, is, is your co-star uh, in this movie. Talk a little bit about Don't Suck, though, man. Don't Suck is a movie about a life or comedian, and he's been through it all. And he gets a young comic to be his opener. And he realizes slowly as this is going on the road that his opener is weird. And then during the whole process, he realizes his opener is a vampire. And it's like, what? It's such a weird concept, but it, it works. It, it, it does, man. It's really, I mean, it, it's the dude just sucks on, on stage. It's just the, the the flat, deadpan performance. Usually his jokes are not funny. Uh, and, and it really was, 
I was just shocked how, how how great it was because it's out now digital and streaming for three ninety nine, and that's a steal, man. Because this movie is totally worth more, bud. Thank you, buddy. It is. It's good. It's funny. It comments on society. It talks about what you would do to make it if you could live forever. There's a lot of metaphor in the movie. That's what really drew me to it. Uh, Jamie Kennedy is our guest. Don't Suck is out now on digital and streaming. So, look, man, uh, the the con circuit, dude, you were just up in Shreveport at Geeks Con a little while ago. Uh, and, are, are you getting pulled into these cons more and now, more and more now with, like, like the resurgence of Scream, et cetera, with, with your character? Bigger than ever. Cons have been bigger than ever. Uh, they're incredible. They were, like, the fans are more... Just uh, they come out in droves. Shreveport was incredible. Beat Con was great, man. I had such a good time there. And uh, it's just a wild time. I think as actors, as we get older in Hollywood and what's happening and with AI coming, I think with the real human experience is going to be something that we all they crave. And so they want a real connection. And so by signing a piece of memorabilia or something, it really gets people hyped up. So it's, it's incredible to be able to do it. So, like, I got a 17-year-old son, and, and, and what, what cracks me up is he talks about Nirvana. The kid, the kid loves him some Nirvana, taught himself how to play the guitar, taught himself how to play drums, and he refers to it as classic rock. And you are you and I are only, like, three, three years apart in age. So every time he calls Nirvana classic rock, it's like a punch in the nut bag, dude. I know. Nirvana's classic rock. It feels like it just came out yesterday. That's crazy. <laughs> 30 years went like that. It's it's unreal, dude. Now look, speaking of of, of, of throwbacks, I, I got an idea. I just want you to listen to me for a second, all right? Did it. Kicking it old school was way before its time. And I got a feeling that now, with Stranger Things and all this other stuff, we need to bring back kicking it old school. What are your thoughts, man? Because I got an idea, but but what are your thoughts on kicking it old school about being way before its time? I think so, man. I think it was like a little early, and now, you know, uh, just some of the jokes are hitting now. Uh, I appreciate that. I've always been a little premature, but uh, <laughs> hey, man. <you> know <laughs> if I got to speak it old school again, <laughs> you thought I did. I need a little help with my breaking. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna need a stunt double for some of the stuff. I don't want to hurt my back. What, what's so I was thinking about it on the drive into the station this morning. I'm going, you know, like, 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 how would you refurbish this? And honestly, I'm thinking that if you bring back your character that, 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 that at the end of the movie, and now you're like a mentor to some newer kid that can actually break dance because we're old as hell these days. So I'm thinking, like, you know, because look, they got the whole nostalgia thing with American Idol, and and you know, you America's Got Talent, and some sort of like nostalgia talent show, as it were. I'm just I'm throwing this out here. I'm giving you free ideas. Where like you are the kid's mentor, and you, and so that way you bring back the your, your original character, but you're mentoring some kid, and it's still a walk down nostalgia lane. Sorry, I'm losing my damn voice again. I mean, I think that's something to it. We got to get that treatment going. It sounds like something that could work. I mean that that that's I I think it good. I think it good. Jamie Kennedy is our guest. Don't suck is out now on digital and streaming. Talk talk more about this movie because you you got a great cast of characters in there. Lots of little throwbacks. But uh, uh but 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 Matt, what was it like working with him and his kind of like uh, on purpose emotionless acting? Oh, he's the best. He's perfect. He's so good in this role. And, you know, I mean, he is just played this character, which is a wild character, which is a vampire, so straight. And the movie, like I say, is like a documentary because now he literally has blown up. You know what I mean? He was like the young phenomenon in the movie. Now he's a young phenomenon in real life. So it was incredible. I was like, it was just perfect timing. Did you get to, uh, uh, well, I know you got to work with uh, Jimmy Walker Dynamite, but uh, did you get to hang out with Carrot Top? Are you and he friends? Oh, I love Scott. He's my boy. I love Scott. He's great. He came in, did a half a day. So fabulous. And just, he's the best, man. He's been helping us promote the movie. And he's just a legend. There's so many different legends in this movie. It's been, it's been incredible. Very fortunate. So uh, tell the folks where they can get more information about the movie, where they can follow you, tour dates, etc. Give me all, Give me all the deets, bro. You can go easily just go to jamiekennedy.com. And just look up all my sources and stuff. But the movie's on Amazon Prime. Don't suck. It's on Vudu. It's on Apple TV. 
Uh, and then when the DVD is going to come out in like a, a like a month, but just go and search it on any of those Roku, those four devices, you'll be able to find it. Dude, Jamie, it, it has been a pleasure, man. Look, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna hit you up on social media with with the Weekend Geek Show because honestly, when I was driving, I'm like, this is kind of a brilliant idea. But now, we, now we just gotta we gotta write the script though. But I I would I would really like to see kicking it back old school. Malibu's uh, most wanted. We, we can put that away. I'm sorry, I did not like that movie, but we can do kicking it old school. We'll, we'll give it a retreatment. Up what? I'm sorry, did I piss you off? My bad. I, what? That's good. No, man, we're going to reboot it. That's good. You know, you can't win them all. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much for your time. Wish you the greatest success moving forward, brother. And uh, we'll, we'll, I'll hit you up on Instagram, man. Thank you, brother. Can't wait to hear it. Appreciate you. Later, man. Later. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. All right, all right Michael, I'm going to eat. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to trim the end because uh, the, guy, the guys from Premier Networks, they always hook me up with these people, so I got to send them a king cake. That, gotcha. that's, that's my people up there. <laughs> but uh, what, what's funny, though, is that all right, before the show started, you and I were talking about this. I was telling yeah. you you know, what, what he and I talked about. And a treatment, that's the word that, that, that Hollywood people use for, like, basically write me a script, show me something, you know. And like, I'm going, I don't I, he needs to be like the mentor. And I'm thinking it's kind of like a Mighty Duck sister act sort of mishmash. You had the idea yeah, that he's like a so bad like, kid. Yeah, so like there's this kid who's, you know, a bully, and so he has to go do some, what, community service? Community some, service, yeah, some that community was the community service. In this community service, there might be, I don't know, an 80s dance competition or an <laughs> 80s throw or an 80s, like, nostalgia or, talent wait, like, show. Like the orphanage or whatever it is, is about they're going to close unless they get, like, you know, $100,000. But oddly enough, there's a break dance competition or a... This 80s competition. Yeah. And so, like, act two, clearly he has to go back to his bad boy roots and be like, oh, you guys suck. Oh, Breakdance is lame. You know, but Jamie Kennedy's character would be like, you know, the upbeat guy, like, hey, fellas. And, like, he rolls down in the hood and tries to do breakdance. And he's like, I don't know, maybe he gets shot. And <laughs> that's, like, one portion of the movie. He's like, we got to do it for Coach. <laughs> we kill off Jamie Kennedy in his own movie. Yeah. I don't think that would be good. Yeah, I don't think he liked that. But, but he comes back in a miraculous recovery at the end. He shows up at the Wakes grand up from performance. Wakes up from another coma? Wakes up from another That's it! <laughs> Holy crap, we got the script! This is the Weekend Gig with T Squared on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. It's up to you. Nowhere I want. Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Lamell with a health note. Heart disease affects men and women almost equally and is the leading cause of death in the United States. That's why it's so important to monitor your health and have at least one checkup a year so your doctor can check your blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol numbers. Catching issues early can make all the difference in your health. So schedule your checkup today. Listen to WRNO on the iHeartRadio app, sponsored by Dudley DeBosier, official injury lawyers of the New Orleans Saints. Call 444-4444. Non-attorney spokesperson, Chad Dudley, New Orleans. Hello, this is Seb Relios from Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to The Weekend Geek. Stay tuned, otherwise I'm going to bash you like I bash those bucket heads. <laughs> Welcome back in to The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm D Squared along with... DJ. All right, so... <laughs> He gets shot. <laughs> Comes back from a coma. It's a perfect callback. Oh my god, the script wrote itself. This is the best treatment. Like we've done it in like thirty minutes, man. <laughs> man, we're we're going to Hollywood, kid. All right, now before we go to Hollywood, though, we do need to talk uh, uh, about uh, Daredevil. Now you know, so the Daredevil. Uh, what is it? Born again. Yeah, Daredevil. Born again. Yeah. So this new is movie. the yeah the new stuff that's coming out because they they salvaged the Netflix stuff yeah. and they and Disney it's, is taking. It's going it to be a different uh, universe than the Netflix series, but same actors though. But but and but so now the the thing was though they they're they're probably bringing back or initially they were not going to yeah, bring it was, back. It was, Foggy. it was a story about them not bringing back Foggy and a Karen. Right, and so that was something that that kind of you know had people a little up in arms. Because yeah, I was upset about that because the entire the uh, attorney thing, like the name of it, is Foggy or is it Nelson and Murdoch? Nelson yeah, and Murdoch. And right, if you don't right. have the Nelson, it doesn't make sense. No, right. So 
ideally, you know, they'll bring that actual actor back because yeah. I, I really liked him. And plus, you didn't know that he it, yeah. was he was in the Mighty Ducks. I was unaware he was in the Mighty Ducks. You know, so uh, but now at the end of Echo. Uh, spoiler alert! Hold up, let me get the uh, I'm sound gonna, effect. Yeah, because I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil something of it. All right, here we go. All right, if you haven't seen the spoiler end alert. of Echo, I'm about to spoil the very ending of Echo. The uh, the kind of like you know the 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 thing that Marvel always end does credit end scene. credit yeah. scene. So basically, uh, Kingpin is flying back home to New York with his tail firmly tucked between his legs because Echo kicked his butt. Uh, and he's watching the TV, and they're talking about how they need a scrappy fighter to run for the mayor of New York. Somebody who's not afraid to get in a bare knuckle brawl. And so, light bulb. So Kingpin, and in the comics, they Kingpin became mayor of New yeah. York. And funny thing, Daredevil Matt Murdock actually became a deputy mayor of for for the city of New huh. York, and when uh, Kingpin got got shot or something like that, he became the interim mayor while uh, Kingpin recovered. So there's this huge storyline thing going on from the comics that they're probably not going to adapt it, but it will flow in there. And I think it dovetails perfectly because Echo was a good standalone series, and then they just left you with that little nugget, basically kind of like uh, you know so. I am Iron Man. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger project. You know, boom. Perfect little teaser. Yeah. Here's what the next thing's going to be. And I think if they go back to that, and that's kind of what they've done, I think this Daredevil series, if they, you know, bring him back, and then you already, you've already got Kingpin established, running for mayor, and then Daredevil, instead of having to use, you know, his, his superpowers and super hearing and echolocation, uses his lawyer skills, which means you would need Foggy. Yeah. You see, would need Nelson. I, I really like the uh, Netflix series for Daredevil. However, I feel like they could have touched on the lawyer side a little bit more. What they did, I think, was it called The Defenders or... But yeah, that, that yeah. show with all the different super yeah, defenders. They, that was it. Yeah, yeah, they touched on the lore side more, which I really liked. So I feel like if they do touch more on the lore side in the movie, I'd really like to see that. Yeah. So all right, uh, moving on. One final, uh, two final things. Oh, Scungy texted me. So the guy, the guy who does the voice of uh, Indiana Jones is actually uh, 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 Troy Baker. Troy Baker. Yeah, he did uh, Joel from The Last of Us in Batman: Arkham Origins. He was Joker. Uh, what else? Look uh, at that Scungy playing hurt from the couch. Well, I think he was he was a Deadpool in a Deadpool game. Countless other voices. Yeah. So uh, that 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 was that was an addendum to a previous thing. You yeah. can listen to the podcast on the iHeart Radio app because I'll finally start uploading stuff again. New, awesome. New year, new me, son. <laughs> new year, new sure. me. All right, <laughs> shut up, dude. I hate you. <laughs> Happy birthday in two weeks. So also, <laughs> um, well, oh. So Scunchy sent me this, Renegade Studios. All right, so Axis and Allies, the greatest freaking game ever. Well, now they're making a G.I. Joe board game called Battle of the Arctic Circle using the Axis and Allies that is rules. That directly up your alley, dude, directly. Dude, and you got little minifigures of, 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 of snow vipers, you rattlers. Oh, my God. They're, they're, they're action figures. You going to paint they're them? Not, they're not dolls. They're you going to paint them? No, because they're solid monocolor, and you need them that color because, you know, they're on the board. Uh, I get you and mean. they're too small to paint. Now they got them bigger, right. maybe. But all right, now we need to do this. This week in geek history, we're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my God! This week in geek history is brought to you by Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmade by Nancy Hansen, read by Brian Held. Available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. This week in geek history. Yes! Oh my God! Hey, Scungy, while you're listening, send me the damn commercial for for the uh, CrossFit people. Come on, slacker. <laughs> All right. All wh right. What's up? <laughs> First off, let's do uh, January 14th, 2005. <laughs> Speaking of Daredevil, Electra <laughs> came out. The spin off Wait, Jennifer from the Garner? Yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer Garner? Garner, the spinoff from the 2003 Ben Affleck Daredevil. How did that movie get made? I was not I was not alive for that movie being made, but I am not sure how that movie even started it was, production. It was pre Capital One when before she was doing all the Capital One commercials. No, but, but she did thirteen going on thirty one. But did Daredevil and, was it I don't think it was a, sex, a successful movie, was no, it? No, and then Kevin so, Kevin Smith did it as like because he was fan service. I mean yeah. he even played like the city morgue mortician or whatever. So how did Electra even get money to be made to begin with. I, I don't know. Jennifer Garner was hot at the time. Like, I mean, like, like, uh, you know, a, a big, big time. Uh, you know? I guess. I, I, guess, I, I, I guess. think she's hot. You probably don't. I don't, who, who, I don't know what you think. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go with January 15th, 1979. <laughs> 
Drew Brees is born. Drew Brees. Yeah, that's oh, the crap. birthday for today. What is the score of the uh, the, the the Bills uh Bills Chiefs game? All right, continue. I got no clue. But yeah, Drew Brees is born. Star NFL quarterback <laughs> who led the New Orleans Saints to victory in Super Bowl XLIV, which is on my third birthday. Yes, he was your birthday. I February had to wait, 7th. I had to wait 30 some odd years and you get it on like year 4. Yeah. Suck. It is what it is. <laughs> Shut up. What's next? All right, <laughs> next up. Let's go to uh January 15th, 2001. Wikipedia is launched by ha! Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger. So get this. This is funny. Uh, you know how cheap I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm incredibly cheap. Yes. But well I aware. use Wikipedia so much. And, <laughs> and like they constantly, not, not constantly, but like once every six months or so, they're like, give us money, give us money. Yeah. You, know, hey, you use us, give us money. Yeah. I gave them 10 bucks. <gasps> really? I know. Go right? you. I know. I, I can't believe I did it either. See, I, look, I don't I, know what happened. Whenever I see that, I always feel kind of bad, though. Whenever I, I do see because them, I use, well, and you use the, Wikipedia. I use Wikipedia constantly. Yeah. And, and so like the past two, three times, I'm kind of like, I thought about it, but then I was like, I gotta go through this, but I forgot that I had a, a, some money on my pay my PayPal account. Yeah, and so that's not real money. So yeah. I, I'm like, here you go, here's ten bucks, because <laughs> I forgot I had money in my PayPal account. So I'm like, here, take ten bucks, there and they go. sent me a nice thank you letter too. Oh, how sweet. very nice of them. <laughs> All right, next? let's go to uh, January seventeenth, two thousand four. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite bah! debuts at the Sundance Film Festival. That just eat the dang quesadilla. See, I've I've tried to watch Napoleon Dynamite with my friends, but every single time I try to watch, my friends are like, <sighs> "Really? Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't laugh at the jokes. I laugh at the jokes. They don't. How? I don't know. I've tried to watch it. Like I'm active. It's not like I don't want to watch it. I actually want to watch. It. I enjoy the jokes. My friends, however, son, think they're son. Lame. I think you need new friends. That's what I'm communicating. Oh my god! All right, so so it's twenty to twenty four. Bills are up in the fourth quarter uh, or end of the third. It, I, and what's so funny is like it went up to twenty seven. KC twenty seven twenty four. But then the seven just disappeared. Now it's twenty twenty four. So I don't know. I'm not watching the game. I don't know. Crazy. All right, what's next? What, what All right, we got a uh, January eighteenth. Ni- no, not sorry. Eighteen ninety six. Eighteen ninety six. Yeah. The X-ray machine is exhibited for the first time. The oh, the machine. The machine, yes. I forgot. It's like the, the guy who in, who found X-rays, like like he put something in a book, like like he put something in a book, and it ended up like he had his hand on the book, and like he opens it up, and then there's the bones of his hand on the paper. He's like, huh. "What the hell? Oh, what happened here?" And, and I think he still glows like Marie Curie. I'm huh. not, one or the other. I think it's I think it's something like that. Cool. I got. Right, we got a minute. I got one more. Perfect. Let's do January twenty first, nineteen ninety eight. 98. Probably my favorite one. Capcom releases Resident Evil 2. Oh, that is the greatest. Well, I, da- I re-downloaded it. I yeah. Got, I, it was on sale for like four bucks. Dude, Resident Evil. And it's re- re- remastered. Yeah, the, re- the remake. Yes, Resident Evil 2 remake. That's you, a good game. I, I I like it, but you know what they took out? Huh. The fixed camera angles. Yeah, so good. You, you could, no. That's what what made, that scared the crap okay, out of me, dude. but you could move. You could know, not. It was but, impossible but to but move. But it made it terrifying. That is the one thing I do not enjoy was, about old uh, was Konami terrifying. Games. Silent Hill 2, it's a great game. Insanely difficult to play. Well, that was the point. It was hard, and you didn't know when a zombie was coming. You had to listen. Insanely difficult to move. You I couldn't had to walk. listen for the zombie. Walk. Walk. No, you, you walk into ro- one room and you turn around instantly because you're moving. You, you, you just run into the other camera frame and then shoot the stupid zombie. All Whatever. Right, we'll continue this next week. <laughs> All right. Till next time. Keep your nerd flag raised high. Download the free iHeartRadio app. Click that little red button. button. <laughs> WRNO FM, New Orleans, an iHeartRadio station. Available everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. Number one for music, radio, and podcasts, all in one.